put that. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've not obviously finished it because it's huge, but I'm kind of going through and reading the trivia and going through the bits about the episodes. And, um, I haven't quite got to my favourite episode yet, which is the the cat and spider. I think that's what it's called. Oh, yeah, season yeah, two. Six, six, yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely love that one. That's, that's how my brain works. You, you say your favourite episode, and I immediately go for the production code. I was like, oh, episode, you know, MU66. That's why, because I, wow. I know the, like, if, if, I, if you said, what's the production code, code for, like, 32, I'd go search the BHO. 33, Star Child. 42, Double Edged Sword. 2, Shaping Staff. 11, Master yeah. Power. It's like my brain knows all those production codes, because I've spent so many years breaking them down. My brother's been lying to me for years, so you can correct him and tell me whether or not this is true. But he oh. said there is an episode that shows Adam getting the sword and becoming He-Man for the very, very first time, as in, like, he goes into Castle Grayskull, there's a bit where they're in the desert with uh, Skeletor, and he's convinced this is an episode. That, and I went, I'm I think, pretty sure it's not. But based on what he's saying, that sounds like um, the 2002 series. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that didn't have an information. There's not, there's not even a, there's not even a script or a premise. They never actually were going to do the origin of He-Man. Even, yeah. even at the, you know, I've got all the behind the scenes material mm. for all the episodes that didn't get made. There was never any premises. Even they didn't even bother coming close to let's tell, do or, or He-Man's origin. It, yeah, just, yeah. it just never came to pass. Yeah, he's he's convinced. He's absolutely convinced. I, I'm quite happy to tell him that was never a thing in filmation. It never existed. Stop winding me up. <laughs> it's it's one of those things though. Like I, my memories from when I was a kid are, are, are pretty scary at times. Like how accurate they are. Like I can still remember the trailer for He Man the week before it aired in the UK. So you're probably looking at the last week of August. But I can yeah. still remember. The shots from Diamond Red Disappearance used. I remember how I thought about it at the time. Wow. They showed He Man doing Eye of the Power, and then they cut to a shot of Skeletor's warriors um, yeah. after he demonstrated the Diamond Red Disappearance on the creature. And I remember thinking to my brain, I remember thinking to myself, oh, they, those, those baddies know the, the secret. That was the, like, I didn't even know really much about the series. I, I had the mm -hmm. mini comics, I had the, the few figures. But, you know, the cartoon world obviously changed a lot. Yeah. And, yeah, it was, it was funny. I still, you know, for the longest time, you know, I had I had about 70, I think I had 72 episodes that I recorded, I recorded from TV, which meant I was missing, goodness, what's that, 60, a lot. Yeah. Um, I was missing a, a bunch of episodes as well. So when I, when I, when I came on the internet in like late 95, there was like the infancy of the He-Man community. One of the first things I did was, does anyone remember these episodes? And it was all these memories that even to this day, I still got like, I wouldn't know the episodes, the titles. I would just have to like, I would have to describe a, a scene. So, yeah. like, um, so I'd write stuff like, oh, yellow robot attacks um, the Royal Palace. And that turned out to be yeah. Return of Evil or yeah. Fisto and Spike or in, in a competition that was, um, the games. There was all these uh, ways, like moments. I remembered. I remember mm. the end of House. I remember the end of House of Shikoti Part One for years without knowing what the episode was. And then when I started going into um, there was a magazine shop in Soho, and they sold TV listings magazines. Yeah. Randomly went in there one day with my dad, and I was going for these TV listings, and I was determined to try and find when He Man first aired. Yeah. And I was going through. And I was like, Oh my goodness, September the fifth, nineteen eighty three. So anytime you hear, you know, people online talking about He-Man first appeared in September, that, that was me in a magazine shop in 1993, <laughs> sourcing this episode, uh, magazine of the, uh, the TV Times, yeah. getting the listing and going, oh, oh my goodness, this is when He-Man first aired. And then yeah. I think it was the early noughties, um, yeah. an American guy who had a TV listing magazine said, I think He-Man aired later. And I was like, no, no way would it have aired later. It was like, oh my God, He-Man aired about two and a half weeks after it did in the UK. I was like, that's yeah. so bizarre. So there was this piecing together that timeline, but th those memories initially, like I say, the House of Shakota, the end of part one just burnt, seared in my mind. And I saw the episode title in a magazine in this one of these TV lists. I was like, episode House of Shakota part one, that's got to be the episode I remember seeing as a kid. And then, yeah. you know, the internet comes along and I still got it to this. I remember saying to, I started talking to a few people, there's this one guy in America, Scott White, who had 
he taped all the He-Man and season one of She-Ra um, when they aired on the USA Network in 89-90. Yeah. So he had them all. And I was like, oh my God. Oh no, he had, what did we work out? He had 127, I think it was. Yeah, 127, 128 episodes. We were missing two. And he, and he sent me like, the first time we spoke, he, he said, I'll send you a, a tape of episodes. I've still got that VHS tape from, God, January or March of 96. Wow. And it's, it's a VHS tape, NTSC, and it's got nine episodes on, but they were nine episodes, some of which I'd never seen, and others which I hadn't seen since I was a kid. So like Into the Abyss, the House of Shikoti episodes, I'd never, ever even heard of the problem with power. When we when we first got online, someone said, oh, there's an episode where He-Man kills somebody. And I was like, I was like, Filmation would never make that episode. That was like, literally saying that. And someone yeah. goes, and then Scott sent me a sound clip from it. And I was like, oh, oh my God, they made that episode. Like, I, I missed that. I miss, I very much missed that part of the community, the I journey. Haven't, I haven't seen that episode yet. Believe it or not. You've never seen The Problem With Power? No. I, I, oh my goodness. There's so many episodes I've not seen. I bought, um, uh, I bought the episodes on iTunes because that was the only way oh, we right. could really get it. Um, so I've got season one, season two, I've got season one of She-Ra, season two of She-Ra. Um, I've weirdly seen more She-Ra than I have He-Man, which is odd, but... Yeah. Um, much, yeah. yeah, so I kind of got... I'm halfway through season two and there are still episodes I don't remember ever seeing. So it will be interesting when I do finally get to to that episode and go, oh, how, how to mentally digest this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, but that's, uh, that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, well, But like, that's also quite exciting, is that, like, the fact that, you know, I still remember that feeling of, of getting VHS tapes from America and, and putting yeah. them in with episodes I'd never seen. Or like I say, the ones I hadn't seen in, at that point, 10, 12 years. And I'd yeah. like, oh my God, I remember this episode. And we, like I say, when I was doing that whole thing in the, in the early days of the internet community, and I'd say, yeah. I remember this episode with like a, a, a wizard in green at the window, and that turned out to be Wizard of Stone Mountain with Malek. And I was like, oh, that's who that was. I never saw Evil Seed the first time around. Because in the UK, the episodes were shown once a week, mm. but in chunks. So you'd have, even though we got the series first, we got like four or five episodes. Then they took a break until January. Then you had another like, 10 or 12 then you had another break I, it's quite funny to think that he-man finished production in uh, december of 1985 he, yeah. the he-man cartoon finished production yet they were still airing technically new episodes as in episodes that never aired in the uk all the way up until mid 1988 yeah so it's crazy we, three years after the series had technically finished we were still getting new episodes whereas america were like see you later we've moved on to she and now we're on like I don't know at that point Transformers or real Ghostbusters or Barney yeah. Six or something. It's like they were they were long gone. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy. I, I remember um, that when kind of Shira came out, it was one of those things where you can't like this. You're a boy because it was the eighties, and that's how people sort of felt. And I remember watching it and going, "Well, no, this is really cool. You know, I think she's epic. I think she's brilliant." Um, and I kind of went. It's it's cool when you get to see both of them on screen together at the same time. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, when I mean, that you was, get that crossover, I was like, oh, this is this yeah, is the crossovers were. I mean, the crossovers pr were pretty designed for people like me. When I remember, I still remember the first time I ever again. The first, it's so weird how it's just burning my brain. The first time I ever saw a clip of Shira was Children's ITV over here was showing like all these, you know, coming up in the summer yeah. or in in September. And they showed a clip from Shira, but the clip they showed was a door at Castle Grayskull, you know, slowly transforming. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'll never forget my memory was they've made He Man a girl. That was literally the first thing <laughs> I thought was, oh, they've made He Man a girl. I wasn't, I was like outraged. I was just like, they've made He Man a girl. Mm. And we didn't get the first five episodes. So the first episode shown was Jewel at Devlin. And it was yeah. just like, oh, we're, we're straight into the series. Because I, I didn't see I, um, those first five episodes either. I actually saw The Secret of the Sword. Yeah, likewise. Um, and I, again, I watched that in retrospect. So, yeah, I yeah. think it probably was The Jewel at Devlin was probably the first one that I saw. The, well, the funny uh, thing, I, like like you, I, I didn't... The first time I was even aware that the, fir the, 
the the movie was the first five episodes edited into a movie mm. was I think like 1997 there was a guy called Owen Sharp and he'd done this meticulous list of episodes and he had this like into ethereal I was like what are those episodes he's like those are the first five I was like what so yeah the first five and he sent me like the original introduction sequence and a few of the deleted scenes I was like oh my god this this was a thing I didn't even know this existed because I'd grown yeah. up with Secret of the Sword and just yeah. thinking they made a movie well Whereas, that's what I thought until yeah, I kind of pulled it on um yeah, iTunes and went, yeah where would these episodes come from? What's this yeah, about? It's, 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 yeah, it's so bizarre. And like, yeah, like Jewel of Devlin, I remember watching that. I remember kind of enjoying she but at the same time, I think also at that point in the 80s, there were so many other cartoons. Like He-Man had come, or it was, mm. still, it was still on TV, I should say, when she yeah. was on. He-Man was on. But then you had, like some of my favourite ones were obviously Transformers, mm. Mask, and Real Ghostbusters. Those were probably the next three that... So she didn't really get through them they were like oh i love like transformers <laughs> and mask and I, I really didn't like the she-ra toys i bought she-ra yeah like I, did i buy no I, I the she-ra was the only doll that i bought as a kid and i, I had a few episodes on vhs yeah. but then i kind of checked out of she and then you know like i say for years i had 72 72 episodes of he-man on vhs but i had probably about 10 episodes of she-ra out of 93 yeah um I just didn't care for it. And then when the internet came along and you know you start speaking to people and you hear about episodes, it's like, oh my might, might give this She-Ra show a chance. Then you know, grew to yeah, I yeah. fell in love with it. It was like, oh my goodness, it's such a an awesome series in its own right. Um, yeah, I mean, but yeah, it's, it's yeah, I I, I, for, for me it was one of those things like growing up, you didn't admit as as a boy to to liking it. It was a girls' show, it was for girls. So the thing was you get teased. So if you say, oh, I watch He-Man, and they, they were like, oh, okay, well, do you watch She-Ra? And you're like, no. And then they'd disappear, and then their sister would come over, and she would say something like, oh, did you see this week's episode? It had He-Man in it. And like, okay, then I'm watching it. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's, yeah. That's kind of what happened. So it became this thing of, like, did you, did you, did you see it? I'm like, yes, Sarah. <laughs> you know, no, I, do, I do remember, like, I remember being in, in uh, junior school and when he met Ed, mm. and when she came out, it would have been probably, yeah, it was like 10, oh, how old was I when she Ed on TV? I'm trying to wait, and when she Ed in the UK, it would have been 85, I guess. I think yeah. 80, 85 so been or like 86. Eight, I was yeah, in middle school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I'm trying to remember, I'm sure, yeah, it would have aired in 1985 in the UK, so I would have been, yeah, because it aired before America. So yes, yeah. yeah. I was five, so I was just turned eight years old, and yeah, it was um, it, like you say, it was that kind of weird thing of being at junior school, being at school, not not admitting you you kind of even watched She-Ra. Yeah, um, and there was also like even back then there was that. Yeah, I remember there was a, some. It sounds weird to talk about as mm. about eight year olds, but I remember there was like slight cynicism at cartoons yeah. at that point. Mm. Not as in like cartoons, rubs was just like. Oh no, we're into you know, this was 1985, 86, I guess, at this point. Yeah. And kids are more interested in like salt and pepper in the music yeah. charts. Yeah. And stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Don't get me wrong, but badass group. But it yeah. was stuff like that. And it was just you, you felt, you know, there was there was a few of us. I remember like real Ghostbusters was was an exception. Everybody, boys and girls, really seemed to dig that at school. Every, I think it yeah. was maybe because it had the movie tie-in. Yeah. But when Real Ghostbusters came out, everybody at school was talking about that. And it, it was like a lot of love for that. And you, you, you were allowed to buy the comics and the things. But She-Ra was seen as a bit too flowery. Even yeah. though if you watch the show, it's like, oh, no, they're an oppressed group of people fighting against a dictatorship. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's a real <laughs> girly cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's hilarious, but um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's no, the thing. Right. They, they talk about if you, um, you know, talk to your your peers about it, at, you know, now versus then, they would talk about it then as if it's kind of like, oh yeah, you know, it's girl human and she has a tea party. It's like, no, it's yeah. not. <laughs> it's I mean, to that. be honest, like from what I've seen on the internet, you'd get some probably you know journalistic experts who would also say, yeah, oh yeah, she was just this and that and it's like you've never even watched an episode yeah. have you? it's like when you sometimes yeah. you know reading uh i've, I've read uh, well actually tell a lie i remember watching um 
there was a, a show on Channel 4 back in about 2002 or 3 over here in the UK. Yeah, yeah. And they did, they did like 100 Greatest Kids Shows of the 80s or something like that. Yeah, I, I, I think shows. I saw it. <laughs> there, there, I mean, there's, there's been so many of those. There have been American ones, British ones. and But this, this one was, yeah, and they had He Men around about number 10. And it wasn't, it wasn't like, it was a weird assassination piece because there was one guy who was like a genuine journalist and he was like he goes frankly i think he man was one of the scariest things to happen to america in the 1980s he said it was all about you know strength and power and here is our sword here is our power let's attack other countries it was like what like how are you getting that you and this is the thing and i see it time and time again online where people you know Here's a bunch of things about him. I stopped reading articles, to be honest, many years ago yeah. about him and Shiv. It's like, what, like, this could sound so arrogant, but it's like, what are you going to tell me about this show that I know in depth? And this is the thing, and they're going to say, like, I don't mind if you've got an opinion about it, but don't come at me saying, oh, there was this scene, which is clearly this. And it's like, it's clearly not. You're, you're, yeah. you're, yeah, yeah. And it's, but it's, and it's happening all the time. And I think that's kind of like, yeah, I'm just, people send me articles and like, have you seen this? I'm like, yep. <laughs> the, the, um, you see, like, I, the thing I hope takes over the internet, that I, which I'm hopefully seeing more and more of, what I'm starting to see more and more of, is yeah. more creativity and not simple exploitation. And by that, I mean that um, that Star Trek filmation. Yes. Uh, the new, next year, yeah. and they've just done a DS9. Is, is it DS9? Voyager. No, Voyager. Yeah. Voyager. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are awesome because that's that's creativity, I think, at a really high standard where you've got yes. these these people and said, what would filmation what would those, those shows look like in the filmation thing? And yes. it's not poking fun, it's actually no. ad adhering to exactly what it would have looked like in the 70s. Yeah. And yeah. it's perfect in that way. Is there's a few things that I would be like, oh, that's not really an intent, but at the same time, I think it's near perfect. Mm -hmm. And I want I, I love seeing that because that takes effort. Yes. Whereas, you know, like I say, articles about he man and Shira, you know, were they secretly lovers? It's like, no, no. But there's this one, there's this one image where they're hugging. They're clearly, and it's like, oh, of course, you've never hugged a family man. Clearly, you've never hugged a family man before. <laughs> and it's just, it's bizarre. It's, and it's just that kind of, yeah, it's, it's, that's, I think that's, you know, as I'm sure we yeah. talk about, that's why I've kind well, of, heading towards this YouTube channel thing. So I'm like, I'm sick and tired of seeing, you know, videos by people going, here's this. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to start making videos with actual, you know, facts in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, with, with that in mind, there were two things that, um, you know, you've, you've made me think of. Obviously, with the, the Star Trek Voyager and the um, Star Trek Next Generation um, video that was, the animation that was done, I think it's just spot on. It's like, oh, yeah. he looked at, how filmation would have approached it, the colorization, the, the way in which they move like this and they run. I just, I thought it was epic though. I remember seeing great. it going, the attention to detail, the passion behind it was just spot on. And it's great to see those type of creatives, you know, put out something that you sort of go, wow, I could almost believe yeah. that that was done by, by filmation. 10, 20 years great, from now, 10, 20 years from now, that can be on YouTube, and I guarantee you'll get a generation of kids or whatever, or people looking back going, yeah. Oh, did filmation do? You know, I honestly think because it's that convincing. Yeah. That's what that's as, as a creator, that's what you want. You want people to yeah. look at what you've done and go, Oh, wait, was that? And it's like, No, no, I made that. It's like, Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that I mean, and those things are just so good. Whereas it, I've it, seen other filmation homages before, and they're just mm. atrocious because they don't get it. Yeah. Whereas this these creators that made this got this they understood the the approach and if you're going to if you're going to pay homage to filmation that style then you've got to embrace it yes you don't go oh and then i, mean, I've, I remember there was a sh oh there was a show and they did like a filmation homage on sort of disney or something mm. and it was just such a it was there were there were a couple of things where it was like that's true but there are others where like an arm or head would be missing in for a frame or two. And it's like, mm. that didn't happen in the filmation show. No. They did things called retakes in animation. You're more likely, and this is no disrespect to those shows, it's, you're more yeah. likely to get that from uh, American shows that outsourced to Japan because they had very tight deadlines. They were going back and forth. That's why like, you look at a show 
like, as much as I love it, Transformers, but yes. that, that first season is full of mistakes because mm. they were shipping out to Japan, to Toei Doga, and then Toei Doga were going, well, we, we're going to outsource ourselves. So you get yeah, all these different studios, Korea. all this different talent working on a show, and then what would arrive was scenes where Optimus Prime would look one way in one shot, and then the second shot, he looks completely different. Yeah, Whereas yeah, Formation, yeah. Formation couldn't afford to do that. Literally, no. they... they they were so precision based in their animation structure um, that you, I always say, that's the one thing I love about formation. You know, you get some people harp on it, like, oh, they were cheap. It's like, ironically, that, that studio, formation in the 1980s, spent more on a single episode of animation than any other studio in the yeah. 80s. Yeah. Because yeah. it was more expensive to do in America. Whereas I, I had in to, Japan, sorry, go I was going to say, I had an argument um, with a lecturer about this because they said, oh, Filmation would cheat because they reused animation, blah, 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 blah. And I went, every, every animation studio did that. Sorry, that was Alex messaging me. We'll see what he says in a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, every animation studio did that. I said, you look at Hanna-Barbera, for example, Scooby-Doo runs and the building just goes like this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Over and over again. And I went, but they used a, a technique with filmation, you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, if I mispronounce this or if I get the te technical term incorrect, rotoscope, right? Which is yeah. where they would get an actor to physically do movement and then they would sort of trace it. Is that right? Yeah, basically. So but prior yeah. to the series, they spent a good couple of months where they had like live actors. They had, the filmation had a warehouse where they would do a lot of their live action shooting just outside yeah. of, I think it was Canova Park in Los Angeles. So Filmation's building was here. And well, they had two buildings in, in on Sherman Way and then in Canoga, I think it was Canoga Park. They had like a warehouse. That's where they do the, a lot of their live action stuff like Jason of Star Command, all those 1970s live action shows that Filmation did. But they had that building. So they then started using it for rotoscope for animation. So they had the three actors, the bartender, and then two people that we don't know to this day who they were. Is it a dress up in kind of Oh yeah, was the, he was the local bartender. He was like a huge dude. And, wow. Um, yeah, and he was like he was. So he had filmation. The bars, the bar was there up until about God. I want to say about 10, 12 years ago. It was there for a lot. Well, it was there for a decade. Wow. But the bar was opposite, right where filmation's original building was, where they produced Heat Man. So it's just up, up across the street. Yeah. They hired him because he was a big dude, and they had yeah these three actors, and th that was the rotoscope. They would have like. They would position the camera, have the actor do this, have the actor do that, throw, struggle cycle. But then uh, we only found this out about a few months, a few months back, earlier this year, maybe late last year, that the actor that did the rotoscope for He-Man also doubled up for Beastman. So what he would do for the for the He-Man is do all this the walk cycle and this, and then for Beastman he would punch over. So when you get that animation of Beastman kind of, you know, kind of uh, hunched over walking into shot, it's like, oh, wow. I mean, yes, that's rotoscoped, but most of the other rotoscope, like King Randall walking into shot of Man Arms is all based on that He-Man stock. So the information spent, I dread to think how much, but like creating a stock library, much of which, not much of which, I'd say a percentage of which, probably a, a, an astounding percentage of which was never used. There's this... There was this rotoscope battle with Teela and Prince Adam using bow staffs that I've got a few cells from. They're, they're fighting with bow staffs. That was never used. There was different sequences of He-Man and Man at Arms and Skeletor and Teela, all these different animations that were just never used. But they created this stock library and then pulled from it to create... This is the thing, that's what I was saying a bit before, but the thing that you always got with filmation is that when you turned on the TV yeah. and He-Man came on, or she or any filmation show, mm. you knew what you were going to get. And what I mean by that is you would watch the intro and there would be no stylistic change. Mm. Whereas some of my favourite shows, like Mask, or The Real Ghostbusters, or Thundercats, or Ninja Turtles, you would mm. see that intro and be like, oh my God, that's gorgeous. And mm. then the episode would follow and you're like, where was this animated? <laughs> you know, it's, and it's, <laughs> that's, that's the problem. And that's like something I, I want to eventually cover on the, chat, on the mm. eventually YouTube channel, because it's... It's scary that people just seem to forget that. Like Thundercats had yeah. probably the best animated intro of the 80s, oh. closely, followed, closely followed by Ninja Turtles, I think. Yes. So they were both yeah. gorgeous looking intros. But nine times, no, not nine times out of ten, that's a high number, but half the time, the episode that would follow that intro was subpar. Yes. So you would, you would, 
you'd be drawn in and think like, yes, and especially with Thundercats. And then you'd go, oh, Thundercats is quite a slow moving show. Yeah. Whereas with He-Man, you'd watch the intro and then you see the episode and it's like, yeah, it's this is what we got. And yeah. if anything with, 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 with filmation is you were guaranteed sometimes that the episodes were going to be better because you'd have directors like Tom Taylor and Alwitz or Tom Sito or Mark Glamack would come on and they were like, let's direct this episode and get animators like Sherry Wheeler or Tom Seato or whoever to create some sequences to really kind of punch up this episode. And you see that a lot with um, She-Ra and especially She-Ra's second season. Yeah. He-Man's second season a bit, but She-Ra's, She-Ra's second season, they really started kind of going, yeah, yeah. maybe at that point they were like, we've got 20, 28 episodes left. Let's go, yeah. let's go out on a, on a bang. So yeah, it's... Um, I've, I've, I will happily not not defend, but just state factually that Filmation were not the cheapest studio in the eighties. Yeah. Far from it. Yeah, yeah. And, yes, and yes. You can criticise them for the stock system, but then yeah. by that you have to criticise every studio. Not not because they all had stock systems, but because they all found ways of cutting costs. Mm. America, um, Marvel Productions would send their work to Japan, mm. and it would come back looking a variety of different ways sometimes awesome sometimes like whoa but it is, it's weird that people go like you know oh th- that was better than filmation it's like based on what like and then mm. tell, tell me that the episode the next episode is as good as the one you just mentioned compared to filmation and it's yeah i mean I, i've studied and researched and written about animation for yeah decades and it's just like you can't yeah you see articles like i say online written by experts it's like yeah. you just you literally got bored one day in your job at wherever and you decided oh i need to write an article about you know mm. this happened in the he-man show yeah. let's, you know, let's just make up a rumor right now you know <laughs> skeletor and skeletor and orko were lovers here's here's a shot of skeletor holding orko so it must be true it's yeah like, Come yeah, on, yeah. Man. and and he held him by by his arm so he would be a violent lover <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there was no mercy shown to poor Orko. No, um, that's thank God he had the mask on. Well, it's funny that you, you say about like the, the animation and how accurate it was because I remember back in the day looking at filmation and it was just accurate. You know, you didn't get much, you know, incorrect thing where they had hold of one thing and then it disappeared. Like, it did happen, obviously, because it happens in all animation, everyone makes mistakes. But the biggest, for me, um, offender of making mistakes was the Ninja Turtles cartoon. Because I mean, I, it's amazing that you've, you've said that. So I did, in preparation for this YouTube channel, I've been creating episode commentaries because they're the yeah. easiest thing to create first time. Like, you know, I thought I'll, I'll do a bunch of episode commentaries so I've got them ready, like yeah. ready to upload. And then once they're done, I can start doing all the videos like the articles the video essays and stuff mm. but one i did i completed was it yesterday or the day before was my episode commentary for the first episode that aired of ninja turtle hero turtles in the uk yeah which was return of the shredder and oh, in okay. that in that commentary i talk at length about especially that episode more than most being an offender for how many times the turtles headbands change color how many times and it's, i mean in return of shred it's ridiculous you get you get shots of like leonardo talking it's Raphael's headband you get one shot where all four turtles cross the channel six news building yeah. and when they get to the final shot there's two leonardos it's like <laughs> but and the thing i i made um, the point I, I made in this commentary is i don't understand what how those mistakes made it through because yeah. in when as as a director in america or as a in charge of production in America, you would either fly over to Japan and oversee production, or mm. you would get the animation sent to you. Well, you'd always get the animation sent to you, of course. But when the animation was sent to you, you'd animate it and then go, oh, "This is wrong. Can you do, can you do a retake of this scene?" Yeah. So retakes are commonplace in animation. Why they weren't done for a lot of those early Ninja Turtles episodes is really baffling. I I think part of it might have been to do with um, Playmates' original agreement. Uh, just to explain to the people that don't necessarily know, Playmates were the company that made the Ninja Turtles. They're not connected to the, another type of Playmate that you might be thinking of, just to <laughs> clarify that. Um, they paid apparently for the first eight episodes. Um, so I'm Would that be the miniseries was... and then? 
So is that the five? Is, is does that include the five? The first five episodes then? As in the mini series? Yes, the mini series. Okay. Because that became such a um, a hit, I think the network then paid for the rest. So I don't know if it was the right. same amount of money or whether it was just a case of, hey, look, we've done five. It will sell the action figures up on the shelf. Like I don't know what the the behind the scenes thing was, but I do know that it was initially Playmates just paid for the first few episodes whether it was then handed off and went hey you can put this in syndication go nuts what the go was with that but um yeah apparently yeah, first, right. first couple of episodes it was playmates paid for it so they could uh have a cartoon so they could get the toys onto the shelves of toys r us apparently yeah you that makes did sense. a comic book or a cartoon to back your toy so yeah yeah it's bizarre no, it's, 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 the thing started as a comic book you know as a comic book parody and then became this massive toy juggernaut i remember seeing so many things with ninja turtles on it <laughs> it was hysterical no, I was, I, again on this on this commentary I, I kind of think out loud and say i think in the 80s uh, and into the early 90s i still think as big as he-man was you know mm. he-man was a billion dollar property as was oh, transformers yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mask was popular, real Ghostbusters was hugely popular. But I still think from memory, Ninja Turtles was the biggest thing because it didn't just it, it transcended its very kind of roots and the cartoon. Yeah. Because I remember seeing Ninja obviously Ninja Turtles in the pop in the pop charts with like the Partners in Crime song and um a few other music videos that were based, you know, signed to the movie. Yeah. But there were like news reports as well about Ninja Turtles. There were news reports, there was articles in magazines. Obviously, computer games were coming into their, you know, arcades were starting to look great. But we had that yeah. amazing Ninja Turtles arcade. So computer game magazines were covering Ninja Turtles just on a very casual basis. So you had, compu you know, computer magazines, pop culture magazines, um, the news, uh, all these different outlets that were covering Ninja Turtles. And, talk about, mm. and, and you know, Masters of the Universe was, was easily one of the biggest probably more so than Transformers in terms of what they slapped the He-Man logo on. Like there was so much merchandise, yeah. more so I'd say than Transformers, with, with, at least in the 80s with regards yeah. to merchandise, because Master of the Universe had so much, to this day, I was on yeah. eBay last night and I was like, oh my God, they released one of those like glow things where you, you is it like you press a pen to it and there's like little glowy lights and there's yeah. a, an image of the dragon walker behind us. I was like, when did that exist? But that was a thing. So well, my, these my favourite thing, but, but I can't get hold of it because in my head it's sent over it would smash, is it's the power sword in a plasma globe. And I saw it and I went, oh, wow. oh I think I need this. Yeah. But I just knew the moment I'd buy it, like even oh, if I used yeah. FedEx to get it over here, it would just break. It, it would not break. last, sadly, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But, with, but Ninja Turtles, like their merchandise was, you know, you said it earlier, like Juggernaut. Ninja Turtles yeah. merchandise was on everything because not only was it on everything, but companies wanted to help promote. I know it sounds obvious that's what merchandise is, but you had Nintendo over here yeah. in the UK say, right, we're gonna we're gonna package a Ninja Turtles video game with the Nintendo. Yeah, and then therefore, like millions more nintendo units sold exactly. it's crazy and Nin like ninja turtles was just i i think that was a, a genuine phenomenon and it's it's way more popular than hey man at the moment like well to this oh, yeah. day as in yeah, yeah. because it, it did it's lasted it's had an amazing 2002 or 2003 reboot it had a very from what i understand i never really watched it but the cgi cartoon was also yeah. apparently very good yeah, it yeah. had a 2007 animated movie it had the michael bay yes. movies which i'm not a fan of but they were still blockbuster movies they were still true, huge movies true. it was like oh, the second one i the second one i enjoyed because you had bebop and rocksteady and i was like yes. oh i love yeah. and crank and crank i remember well, my mate sitting there going i can't believe we're in a cinema <laughs> looking at bebop and rocksteady and they're actually <laughs> really bloody good yeah yeah it, i think it was one of those scenes that i i saw um it's Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. And I saw that film in the UK when I went over to visit family. And um, <laughs> my, my partner will love this because <laughs> our, our niece said, and she was only three, I don't understand why a grey man would want to go and watch a Ninja Turtles movie. Oh my goodness, wow. <laughs> it was like the sass. 
The sass. Wow, that's, that's hard. Hard. Turn Titans, <laughs> and I went, yeah, but people like different things, you know, and we like Ninja Turtles, we're going to go watch Ninja Turtles movie, and she's like, Phew. and I'm like, yeah, but you like, you like Barbie the Nutcracker, and she went, yeah, but Barbie's amazing. Yeah. Oh right! Wow, <laughs> that's, that's put me in my place, didn't um, it? <laughs> yeah, that's. I think that you just. I think she summed up the internet there. To be honest, <laughs> I think she did. Wow, I think she Bloody did. Hell. She yes. cancelled me straight away. So yeah, definitely. You were you were you were definitely cancelled there. But yes, it's it's crazy. Those those movies. I'm you know not exactly a fan of them. Probably never will ever watch them again. But they were again hugely popular. Same with the Transformers movies. Mm. I didn't care after like the first movie. I, I, although Bumblebee, I did enjoy Bumblebee. Bumblebee but, was like, amazing. I missed, yeah, Bumblebee was, was Because it was the Transformers movie we'd all been waiting for. It's like, and not because they looked like the original Transformers. It was just, yeah. oh, you're telling a Transformers story yeah. with, with good human interaction that doesn't yes. feel like you're being force-fed human interaction. It was, it was yeah. a really good, really, it was a nice, I thought, love letter to the original. Um, yes. But yeah, those, those when you think about those movies, yeah, they may not be our cup of tea, but they've been hugely successful. And all we've been hearing about, and I, I just get bored of it now, live action He-Man every other month, <laughs> or at least once a year, since 2005. That's not a joke. Like John Woo was the first director attached. I think it's like um, once, sorry, itchy leg. Um, <laughs> we get, it seems to be almost like information once a week now, like, oh, it's going to be on Netflix. It's going to be out in the cinema. No, it's going to be on Netflix. Uh, we've got a director. The director's mysteriously disappeared. And now we've got, you know, a new director. My, my former housemate and her boyfriend, uh, 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 when when I was living with them, they um, they were kind of breaking through into, like, Hollywood as writers. They, oh, they wow. started off, yeah, they, they did really good. They, they've, um, they've written a couple of shows, but, like, the last time I spoke to them, well, I mean, the last time I was living with them and speaking to them, they were like working on Netflix shows. But they had a meeting with, was it David Goyer was the director, wasn't it? I yes. Think. David Goyer? Originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a meeting with him and apparently they went in there and that book was yeah. on his desk. Oh, wow. And my housemate was like, oh my God, that's my housemate's book. And he was like, he was like, oh, he goes, it's a great book. I was like, awesome. But he said, apparently, yeah. allegedly, he said, allegedly, but why would my husband even bother lying to me? He said, um, this was after he left the project, and he just said, um, he goes, oh, he goes, that movie, he goes, he goes, it was just uh, such a bad experience. He said, um, he said, certain corporations won't let us just make a movie. It's, yeah. you know, that it's, it's the, and that's the problem. Like I, I know a couple of people in, in, in Hollywood, like a, a direct, a Disney director yeah. who have done the rounds, like worked on a lot of films. And even he said it is the Masters, Masters of the Universe movie is seen as a poison chalice. Mm. As in when you get that movie, good luck making the movie you want to. Mm. Um, and it's all, you know, the, 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 the current thing is they just want to make a poor man's, Thor Ragnarok literally yeah. it's like it's going to be like Thor Ragnarok it's like you've already got Thor Ragnarok make your movie yeah it's, it's amazing yeah. how they think that's a really good thing to keep saying we want to make Thor Ragnarok it's like there's like a billion Marvel fans that couldn't give a shit that you do as in yeah. we're all going to look at that and go nice job 80s cartoon it's tell the story you want to tell and but I mean that said there was the there was the infamous script that did the rounds where it was a comedy and he mm. met, no, Prince Adam was a guy on earth working in New York who had amnesia because that's Mattel's wonderful. They love the amnesia storyline. They've used it in DC Comics, the <laughs> CGI cartoon, and now they want to use it in a movie where Prince Adam's got amnesia right. and he discovers the sort of power because if you go back and look at the old Thor comics, Dr. Don Blake had amnesia, goes into a cave, finds a stick, taps it, I'm the mighty Thor. And they just love this amnesia storyline and they wanted but they wanted to do it as a comedy where, you know, Prince Adam becomes He-Man and then stumbles around. It's like, yeah, guess what? That's also been done. We had Shazam. We had this big burly superhero yeah. that was making mistakes. And that was funny. That was, but that's been done. It's like, what movie do you want to make? And it's, they keep saying, one of the most recent interviews, they, the, 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 I think the, the Knee Brothers, I think, are working on it. They probably won't be by next week. No. But the most recent thing they said was, um, we don't want to change any characters' names. It's like we're not gonna, 
have a you know a character called Fisto and be like Fisto because it's like yeah it's I'm done with that it's it was I've never found it funny or anything it's just yeah it's a name I one of the, one of the weirdest jokes I saw was <laughs> in um you know admittedly I didn't watch the whole series but the um, DreamWorks uh, She-Ra Princess of Princesses of Power cartoon yes. So I watched the first season of that and I kind of like was like, oh, okay. I didn't I didn't go like, oh my god, but I was like, oh, okay, it wasn't awful or anything, but it wasn't my cup of tea. Mm. But then I saw a clip of one of the following seasons, and I just remember thinking, like, what are you trying to do? Where they were like, oh my god, your name's Tongue Lasher? Like Tongue Lasher. It's like you do realize in this show already, there's a character called Catra, whose name is literally from the 1980s. We had she. Ra, Ra and Cat yeah. Ra. It's yeah. that simple. If you want to mock the names, I'm not saying you mustn't never mock the names, but it's like you can't you can't like disparage those characters where you've got ridiculous characters like Natossa and Spinarella yeah. and Perfuma. Don't yeah, mock. Yeah, yeah. I love those names. I love those characters. Mm. But to to throw shade or cynicism at these uh, like these original names. It does yeah. nothing for the brand that you want as a creator to survive. It's like, exactly. you know, Mattel, Mattel keep doing it. They, they, or NBC Universal, whoever, they wouldn't let us do Return of Faith. They said, you can't do Return of Faith because we're worried. One of the things was they said it was kind of, they were kind of worried because they don't have control over it. They're worried how it will reflect upon the brand. And it's like, based on the, how often you keep giving the license out to anybody to take the piss out of He-Man, yeah. The return of Faker is literally the least of your worries. Is is, is this one of the things that they they actually came back and said that oh, they yeah, yeah. It's, it was going to damage was, the you brand? Know, it was basically, you know, obviously first and foremost, it was like you cannot infringe upon our copyright. It's like totally understand that. I have no problem yeah. understanding that. But the thing about you know trying to, it was all about there was pat there was like two pages worth and, and bits about it was maintaining the. Oh, not inconsistent. Maintain the integrity of the brand. Okay. So like, what? <laughs> like the return of Faker is literally the utter integrity of the brand, yeah. and, and yet you're just, saying, "Oh no, we're going to have you know this cartoon where this happens." It's just like, oh man. Just but, just for those that don't know, James, can you explain what the return of Faker is, please? Oh, obviously, obviously I know, you know, but for, the, for those, that for those don't, who don't know, look it up. But just in case, this yeah. is the abridged version. Um, used to work for the. I used to work for the official YouTube channel, the He Man and Shira YouTube channel. Um, we were told we could do anything from that channel, so me and this guy um, who works in Shell decided to start making a new episode of He Man. Yeah. We were then told you can't do that. So like, okay, so I left the channel. I actually, it was a genuine like mutual. I was like, I'm going to leave the channel because it was a lot of work and it wasn't paying a lot of money. So it paid well, but it wasn't you know, compared to what it should be on. Walked away from that channel, and then I said to the guy, "Should we just?" keep making this episode so we spent three and a half years making this new episode of he-man based on you know the original animations but we brought we brought the character of faker in based on the action figure or at least the, the cross cell illustration version of the character we have the magenta arm and the orange hair brought in faker so it's finally we've got the proper faker information cartoon yeah. and because my brain works like this crazy archive of he-man episodes I basically made the episode a new episode because the first thing that I had to make was the episode based on dialogue. Yeah. So I had to have characters having these new conversations based on original conversations. So for example, there's one scene where He-Man and Tila are in the Wind Raider and they're having this conversation. And to the untrained ear, you would watch that and go, cool. But if you look at the edit file, there's 11 different episodes that that conversation <laughs> is coming from. Yep. So Eman and Tila are having this conversation, but it's from 11 different episodes. But because I know the series so well, I can go, how does she react to that? Oh, I know, uh, uh, Trouble in Arcadia, or oh, uh, yeah. Great Skip, Great Show, or whatever. I could always pull from these different episodes. And yeah, we put it together, spent three and a half years, um, showed two scenes at PowerCon in 2017 went down a storm. In 2018, PowerCon showed the first act, and there were a bunch of filmation people present because it was a filmation year. And that was that was like that was almost like a mic drop moment with the filmation guys who I, I know anyway, but were coming up going, "How did you? That was amazing!" It's like yeah. okay, you know, it was, it was such a. It was like, "Yep, that's cool." I've you know, you can't. Nobody else can sing the sh the production's praises because we've had the people that worked on the show and created this in the first place mm -hmm. saying that was awesome 
So that was all cool. And then in 2019, we were due to show it at PowerCon after hours. So yeah, and then a month before NBC Universal, suddenly, even though they were well aware of this project, they suddenly said, you, um, you, can't, you can't show this. And I was like, we're yeah. showing it for free. Like the plan was show it for free and then just upload it to YouTube for free and people can watch it. And yeah. NBC Universal were like, no, you can't do that. It's just like, oh, wow. So I came back to them and I said, look, take it off us you don't have to pay for us and we will give it to you yeah do whatever you want with it put it on a blu-ray put it on dvd put it on a streaming service they just had no interest but <laughs> i say they had no interest they they said we're gonna we're gonna enter discussions about it that was august no that was june no july of 2019 so oh my god it's been nearly 19 20, 20, three years yeah. god yeah three years since they we're about to have discussions. I wonder how that table, maybe that's all still sitting around the table going, what are we going to do? So, yeah, that's... Um, <laughs> you won't be sitting around the, the table fight. going, why hasn't James called us? We've been waiting for yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 it's so funny. Like, I could talk about the whole corporate mentality of Masters University. Like, it's, it's kind of scary. Mm. Um, but, yeah, it's, people think these companies that own Masters of the Universe have all this oh they have an archive they know everything it's like no, they really don't they really don't that's no that is no disrespect to the company because like they're the like mattel created hey man it was a toy line mm. that they made that they they made not because they wanted kids to have fun but they wanted to make billions of dollars which they did and i will always say to myself awesome work mm. but then to come back and go but we're still the only people that know about masters of the universe is like you do realize everything you currently know about master universe you've mm. got from the fan base yeah whether that be fans like myself emiliano val whoever mm. or just the fans in general through conversation because mattel do look at facebook groups and they they watch all these conversations taking place um and sometimes that's for the good of the brand sometimes that's for the the detriment but it's so funny that so many people think like you know, NBC Universal, the current uh, owners of the cartoon license. Oh, they have an archive of the mark. They don't. They don't have like that. <laughs> they don't. They they don't even know what they have. That's the scary thing. Um, oh, but scary. there there are certain things happening right now, mm. which may lead to a brighter future in terms of the archiving of filmations He Man and She-Ra. So that's that's like one thing I'm really praying will work out. It's early days, but it's like oh, okay, this, this may be something good. But are you yeah, so return of Faker. That? <laughs> I, I can't really like oh, okay. I'm, I'm I some things here and there but yeah it's um it's, it's one of those things where uh maybe maybe in a i don't know in a month or so i might be able to but it's it's it bodes it bodes well i think um uh, for the future but at least in terms of i there was a time when i was worried that the current masters the nbc universal use for streaming services like netflix or itunes or whatever or that they keep putting on DVD. Those yeah. masters, those episodes are really like, as, as, a, as a fan, you can watch them and enjoy them, don't get me wrong, but yeah. if you know certain things about the series, like, yeah, that's, you've, you've, you've used the wrong thing there, or the line art is jagged, or infamously, yeah. you know, in the 90s, that decision was made to, hey, let's, let's make all the episodes play at PAL speed. It's like, they're not supposed to play at PAL speed, they're supposed to play at NTSC speed, so. <laughs> For the longest time, I thought like, oh, the the filmation series, He Man and Shira, are doomed mm. to fall apart into disrepair and be, you know, we, each licensee that comes in wants to create their own masters, and what they do is they just believe it or not, even in the age of digital technology, you just de devalue the content or, or you know, make it worse. And mm. yeah, the, the 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 last time I saw the NBC's digital master, Universal's digital masters, they were at the time I was like. Oh God, these are really bad. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I say, things are things are hopefully happening that um, yeah, will will hopefully transform that so everybody gets to look at quality visuals for He-Man and Shear episodes. It's, it's it's early days, but yeah, and yeah, so that was a long-winded way of saying the return of Faker was a fan project that took three and a half years and then was kind of shelved. But then Rob McCullum, who made the who you know made the um Power of Grayskull documentary on yes. which was on Netflix for the longest time with a few other people. He approached me and said, I think we can make a documentary of this whole Return of Faker saga. I was like, really? And then we did the Kickstarter at the start of last year. And 
amazing had all this support and got close to I think I'm a supporter. Like, I'm a supporter oh nice thank you thank you so much yeah i mean <laughs> yeah that's that's awesome it got to i think it was something crazy like i think it got somewhere in the region of a hundred and something thousand dollars and it's just like yeah, it was crazy. what that yeah it was, it was amazing it was such a you know a thing because we thought like rob said oh, i kind of need to raise thirty thousand at least to get like a uh you know, a passable documentary with like maybe Zoom interviews and stuff. And I was like, ah, oh, not in person. He's like, no, not really. I was like, damn. So we put 30,000 as the initial target. I thought we may get that by about day 10. We got it in day one. Mm. I was like, oh God, what? It was it was crazy how the, the support, and it just, it just escalated. Mm. And I was like, wow, people really want to see this. And I think, yeah, hopefully, hopefully one day, oh, well, not hopefully one day, um, early next year, the documentary will be completed or released and hopefully alongside that everybody gets to see the return of faker so yeah fingers crossed that works out yeah. but yeah that, that'd be pretty uh, pretty epic yeah 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 um for myself one of the reasons i i backed it i saw the trailer um that you guys had put together to originally say oh you know coming in 2016 or whatever and i, oh, I God, saw yeah. that and i was blown away and then i saw a few um snippets that were kind of posted around you know um same as productions so yeah, I saw same little as bits right. and pieces and i remember just seeing that whole conversation with um maybe i will win you know and i saw oh, yeah, that yeah. And went, oh wow that this looks so good like the the real attention to detail like the backgrounds look like filmation backgrounds you know the animation looks you know spot on i was just blown away by it and for me personally i went there is no other love letter to an entire fandom than a fan making something with real passion and putting it out there for people to enjoy. You know, I, yeah, I don't like, think when, you can really ask for anything more than that. No, thank you for the kind words. Like, yeah, when 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 I when we were close to finishing it and people would ask me what it is, I would just say, yeah. Oh, it's my love letter to filmation. Because it really yeah. was. It was it was, yeah. it was my you know, the, the first credit on those end credits says dedicated to Lou Shiner, because I I oh. met the man, I met the man numerous times. He was such an awesome dude. Went to his house, for goodness sake. Um, <laughs> just, yeah, an incredible human being. And I was just, and I can't remember, was it, I forget who it was, was that said, like, oh, Lou would have been so proud. It was a filmation person said, mm -hmm. oh, Lou would have been so proud of us. I was like, oh, I was like, I know, in essence, I don't mean this arrogantly, but it's like, oh, he totally would have. He would have loved yeah. it because he always used to call me British guy. He'd have been like, British guy, that's so good. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was awesome because, like, you know, he he has to know like a billion people's names and at, at conventions. Whenever I'd see him, he'd be like British guy. And then there was my friend uh, who's part of the community, John Callis, American. He'd be this was at San Diego, yeah, and he'd say like this guy again, <laughs> and British guy. So I hi Lou. Then I got to know know, know Lou more. Um, I would say yeah, and we had lunch together. And his house was one of the most. Well, I mean, it was the the house of a multimillionaire. It's just like oh, this is. This is what hard work can really achieve. It was, yeah. it was fascinating. Yeah. It was the most yeah. beautiful house I've ever seen. Um, not as good as your view there, but yes, really, well, really lovely. You know, this is this is my garden. So, you know, what more yeah, can I ask you've for? Done a, you've you know? done a fantastic job. <laughs> <laughs> really, Joking really aside, I will send you the actual picture of what it looks like in here and what my actual garden looks like. My garden is impressive, yes, but it doesn't look anything like this. You know, oh, there are some palm trees, sure, they're my neighbour's palm trees, but, you know, <laughs> still, it, it's, it's quite there. nice. I've got a lemon tree, believe oh, it or nice. not, which is quite nice. Yeah, you don't, you don't, don't get fruit trees.